Hello, my name is Jan Kuban and in today's talk uh, in the series of Peoples and the System, I have an honor and pleasure to talk to His Excellency, the Ambassador of Switzerland to Poland, Mr. Jörg Buri. Hello. Hello. So, uh, our conver conversation is produced in collaboration with, Jef with the following institutions. Uh, it's a Swiss Embassy, of course, a Pafere Foundation, which is represented by myself, YouTube channel Nam Zależy, which can be literally translated We Do Care, uh, the Language of Liberty Institute from Phoenix, Arizona, and the uh, Liberty International, International Society, which is providing, spreading the message about liberty. Our goal for today is to present the Swiss political system and, if it's possible, to find out how one can learn more about this system using Swiss diplomatic institutions. So, the Swiss political system is unique in the world. And could you introduce its main features to our international audience, please? Yeah, thank you. So good morning, um, my name is Jörg Bori, I'm the ambassador of Switzerland to Poland and um, indeed we have been uh, pretty um, convinced that our uh, system, our political system is very unique in the world and that's why uh, the Swiss Embassy in Poland uh, has gone uh, through all the country and um, through most of the universities, bigger universities of the country with uh, an exhibit about modern direct democracy. And we try to show with this uh, exhibit um, that the Swiss political system actually bears three key features which are very special and very connected. Um, the first is what you mentioned, the democratic system, which is semi-direct, so people can vote down any law with a referendum, or they can initiate a new law with a popular initiative. Those are two unique tools. That's the first point. The second point is the subsidiarity uh, combined with federalism. So we have a state which is on three levels. We have the commune, we have the canton, which corresponds to the voivod in Poland, and then we have the federal level, the central government. And the powers are basically allocated from down to up and not from up to down. So you have in this uh, system um, on every level uh, the possibility to decide locally. And these uh, three factors make the Swiss system really hard to compare with other systems. Um, but uh, there are takeaways from that system which can be good for any country. I, I have a question, personal one. Are you proud of this system? You personally? <clears throat> well, I should not personally be proud because it's not me personally um, that has built this system, but I think the Swiss society since um, the uh, revolution, the invasion of Napoleon and then the building of the Swiss federal state has constantly been um, optimizing this system. And so I think we can be very proud on this Swiss system. And the way, okay, you are you are dealing with the system. So the the main question which which bothers me is how you manage to create this system because you know it's completely you know unbelievable that you that someone uh, abroad can do the same. So this bottom bottom up system. How did you achieve this? How how it came into being? Mm -hmm. Um, I think the history of Switzerland is slightly different from the history of most countries. Because when we say the Swiss Confederation, we do mean confederation. We have at our founding date, 1291, uh, three cantons that merge together and build this confederation. And then new cantons consecutively uh, are added until we end up with today's territory of Switzerland. So you see, um, we never had the um, situation um, that uh, out of a kingdom, uh, one was trying to think how do we organize the territory and then divide it into districts. But it's like a puzzle where the 
parts came together and became one. And therefore, when the parts came together, the representatives of the cantons always had to decide which powers do we allocate to the central government, not the central government deciding which powers do we delegate to the cantons. So it's a foundation of confederation, I think. Yes, Indeed. It's a, yeah. it's a bottom up and, process. And, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we, we should explain this to, to our audience because it's really confederation. And uh, as, as I heard, uh, in your voice, you have real confederation because other countries they use confederation just as a, a to mask, you know, their political system, and they use it in a different a different uh, meaning. I think. Indeed, you can uh, discuss um, about the term of confederation, but what um, really uh, shows to me in everyday life that Switzerland is a true confederation is that you have uh, legal competences on every level. So you have things which are ruled on uh, the commune level. Um, that's uh, things like uh, how many schoolhouses, how is the firefighting being organized. You also have this in other countries, of course. Then on cantonal level, you have, for example, which language you speak. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's decided on cantonal level. The canton decide which are our cantonal levels. And then on the federal level is foreign affairs, uh, customs, uh, and so on. The typical uh, issues for, for the which union. concern the whole confederation. Mm -hmm. And not only you have these different levels, but also you have the obligation to finance what you decide. So as a Swiss citizen, I get a tax bill from my commune. Um, I get the tax bill from the canton, I get the federal tax bill. So I know what I'm paying for every level and every level uh, decides uh, on its own how much money is required from the citizen to fund the tasks that, he or that, the, the, that the level has uh, decided. So it's really an, an autonomy which is quite complete. So I would like to emphasize uh, to our viewers that every idea proposed by the canton should have to be financed by their own means. So this is really unique, really unique. So thank you for this. Um, so the Americans, the Americans are very proud of their democracy and they want to spread it around the world. Is this the same with the Swiss? Do, do you, the Swiss, want to spread this idea of direct democracy uh, and around the world? I think um, when you talk about the United States and about Switzerland, we're both uh, old democracies. We call each other sister uh, republics because we have um, a little bit a similar uh, intellectual tradition. But when it's about the uh, spreading, I do not think that Switzerland really um, has the ambition to export its political system. Um, there is no copy-paste Switzerland in another part of the world. Um, however, uh, because we have a, a such a lively democratic process within the country where people decide on, um, on many things, uh, we have mechanisms and these mechanisms can maybe be used. So, for example, we could consider thinking um, when we have uh, protests of teachers in a country like we had here in Poland, um, and you see that uh, there is a problem with the salary of the teachers. And because Switzerland is, um, is not a centralized country, the teachers are being paid in Switzerland by the canton. So by a lower level and immediately there is competition on the salary level between the cantons. And, and the quality of work, of course. And that competition always helps. You said it, uh, you saw the point immediately. You, um, uh, uh, competition always generates two things, quality and also uh, a certain justice uh, of, the remun uh, of the remuneration. And the teachers, maybe have to protest less in Switzerland because if one canton thinks that he uh, has a problem with the quality of the school system, he will raise the salaries and teachers will go 
there and then the others are forced to compete and um, that automatically uh, gives a positive effect uh, on the on the management of the of the school system i would say yeah thank you very much it's a very good point uh, is there an international program in the swiss diplomatic institution uh, which can introduce people who want to know more about this, uh, your political system, uh, can, I, can they address to the Swiss embassy and receive some, uh, you know, maybe papers, books or indications how to find out, how to, you know, learn more? I have to come back to, uh, to this, um, which is our, uh, uh, which is our um, paper and um, also uh, gives basic lessons on how the Swiss uh, democracy is organized. Uh, this paper exists in many languages, is available at uh, all Swiss embassies. But then also um, I have to uh, refer to the digital space and there is this uh, website, the House of Switzerland website, which uh, gives this information uh, digitally, but also then you find many, many Swiss uh, websites which explain the Swiss system in one way or the other. So also there we have a wide variety of um, information sources and I can tell you uh, they are easy to find. So one technical question, is the information given here are uh, copyright protected or we can spread it, translate and, you know, spread it around the world? Uh, you, that I will have to clarify for you. Uh, okay. I was not prepared so please, for if, if, such a technical so we question. So will, we will uh, make a sign about this, okay, in, in our program then. Uh, and what are the goals of, of, this, uh, of this program? I mean, so do you want to achieve something or just you are spreading the message and if someone picks up this message, picks up the idea, it's good. If no one uh, picks up, it's, it's also good. Or you have, you know... Um, the primary objective of public diplomacy is to show the assets of your country. And the Swiss assets are certainly the political system, which provides lots of stability and makes Switzerland a very secure place. But then also it's the innovation, which makes Switzerland a very competitive country, a very uh, economically performant country and a country which is interesting to work with. And then a third message would be that Switzerland is a beautiful country. And when you visit, uh, you have a very enjoyable time because it's such a beautiful country. So why would we tell people that we have an interesting and stable political system? It is because other countries are our partners. And it's always good when partners understand you when they deal with you. And this political system, um, of course, uh, has a couple of specificities. It has many advantages, but it also has the specificity that certain decisions um, take some time because they have to be coordinated between the various levels. And uh, that, for example, that in Switzerland uh, law cannot be changed overnight, but that it will take certain time is something which is important for the Polish population to know. Yeah. Uh, recently, the Swiss Embassy uh, toured around Poland with the exhibit on direct democracy. Why? Was it your initiative or you were asked? It was a global initiative that we um, wanted to put our uh, political system into the center of attention. But I took it as a key um, to go to the regions of Poland because I noticed after uh, half a year of my ambassadorship here in Poland that uh, Warsaw is a very tough territory for a communicator. In Poland, all the media, all the institutions concentrate on Warsaw. Um, while as in the uh, Voivods and in the, even in big and important cities like Dainsk, like Wrocław, like Kraków, like Poznan, you find lots of interest first uh, on how could the cities better run their own business if they had more competencies. So they are eager to know how it works in Switzerland. And secondly, um, you get, when you come with good topics, uh, you get a very big attention uh, for your public diplomacy. 
And so um, we decided, uh, let's do it. And we did this roadshow on modern direct democracy, and it was uh, quite successful okay. uh, until we got a bit slowed down by the COVID uh, virus. Yeah, yeah, but I hope you, you, will, you will catch up. And uh, what were the reactions of Polish audience? Um, first of all, I must say uh, that I was impressed with the basic knowledge of the Polish um, audience, uh, politicians, officials, journalists and also students know quite a bit about uh, the Swiss bit. political system. Um, I think this has something to, something to do with the uh, books that are being used in Polish schools. And I saw that they um, uh, explain systems, democracy, direct democracy on the Swiss example, then the UK example for the, um, for the uh, constitutional monarchy, um, and so on and so on. So Switzerland um, is in the Polish books already one of the five, six examples for political systems. And then um, this is a really uh, beautiful to, to know is uh, Polish people are interested in Switzerland. They, when there's an article in uh, the paper about Switzerland, many, many read it and you are confronted with many, you know, details about Switzerland, they ask, is this true? Yeah, yeah. Is it true that the Swiss, that the Swiss were voting against the fact that they would have more vacation? Is this true? They, I can't believe it. And you say, yeah, it's, it was in the paper. It was correct. You read it correctly. We did. And there is a reason. We had the feeling uh, this, would be, um, this would be hard for our economy to remain competitive if we have that sixth week of vacation. Because Swiss pay for their uh, <laughs> ideas, so they know it, okay? So if, if they pay by their own money, they do care. So I think that, uh, that it's, it's really obvious for me. Uh, did you achieve your goals? I mean, uh, did you sow a seed of direct democracy in, in Polish audience? Uh, uh -huh. um, I have, um, uh, I have uh, seen that uh, not uh, mostly the voting and election system has found interest, but the, um, the ideas of federalism, mm -hmm. how you organize the um, voivods and the central state, how, how you organize this relation. And uh, we had a number of um, events uh, with universities and uh, Polish uh, NGOs um, here in Warsaw and all over the countries where we had expert exchange between Polish experts and Swiss experts. And there I have seen that many ideas, many concrete ideas um, have been picked up and that some of these ideas also enter into the debate of this very lively association of Polish uh, cities and, um, and uh, towns. Um, and I think that is uh, a nice result of this, um, of this uh, uh, campaign or this tour that we had with uh, this uh, topic, modern direct democracy. Yeah, and now I would like to switch to uh, Swiss-Polish relationships. What are, are these main features? How you, how you see these, our relations, mm -hmm. Poland and Switzerland? Well, Switzerland and Poland have long-standing and uh, solidly good relations um, on the political level, but also and uh, even more on the economic level. We have more than 200 Swiss companies here in Poland and they uh, occupy uh, 64,000 people. These are high quality jobs, which are exactly um, in the strand or on the level where the Polish government wants to develop the country, uh, not to be a cheap labor country, but an innovative country. And uh, the Swiss uh, companies here are uh, producing high quality products, are do providing high quality services and need very well trained uh, Polish uh, labor force. And the third level where it's very good is the, there is a good cultural exchange between both our countries. 
And also there is more and more traveling back and forth, uh, also moving back and forth. The Polish community in Switzerland has been growing. And I would say uh, these uh, people-to-people relations uh, are a very strong and a very positive factor of our relations. Yeah, thank you. And uh, what are the upcoming projects about Swiss political system? Do you plan? Because COVID uh, has, it seems you, it will go down, so we will be more open. Do you already plan? You have uh, plans for spreading the idea of Swiss political system in Poland? We still have a couple of um, events planned around this uh, project of modern direct democracy. Um, however, uh, this year's uh, main topic uh, is clean tech uh, because Switzerland is not uh, only a democratic but also a quite a sustainable country. And we have mastered to um, bring our energy consumption down by using smart technologies. And we want to present Swiss smart technologies to Poland. So our main focus is uh, currently uh, shifting, uh, but of course um, the current situation uh, brought in a third very, very strong predominant uh, topic and that is the humanitarian action um, where Switzerland and Poland both make efforts Poland a huge, incredible and, um, and uh, impressive effort to help uh, Ukraine, um, which has been invaded and uh, the humanitarian drama, it just asks us uh, to be put on the agenda as the first item. Yeah, and could you could you say a, a little bit more because it's very we are very concerned. So, what kind of help we can expect? Uh, you know, Poland deals with a lot of people. I I, I was a volunteer last night in the, the central station. So, you know, it's the, the people are running. They are losing their their homes, and they you know we have to help them. Uh, for the time being, we are struck with the flow of, of the huge amount of people. And what are your ideas, the Swiss ideas? How, how can we help? How you, as, as a Switzerland, you can help them? Mm -hmm. um, well, first I want to congratulate you that you do this, because uh, many Polish people currently uh, do this. They're out on the streets helping, they're out in the train stations helping, and I see them. And I think it's wonderful, this uh, human solidarity, uh, which really goes like a, like a wave through the country. And I think this is something that you will be also very proud of in the aftermath, because this doing things together is something which shapes a generation and which is um, uh, which uh, not only uh, gives uh, a positive image of Poland in the world, but which will also be in your memories for very long. Yeah. Yeah. So, what uh, is Switzerland doing? Um, first of all, uh, we share positions um, on, uh, on this conflict. Uh, second, we uh, impose uh, sanctions um, together. Thirdly, um, in Switzerland also, we do accept refugees from Ukraine. Um, currently, you can uh, travel for free by train through Poland into Germany, through Germany into Switzerland, and then within Switzerland to your destination. So the public transport is offered. And in Switzerland, we have the structures and the special status, which we have uh, just created for this situation, ready so that it is not complicated for the Ukrainian citizens or people that have lived in Ukraine and do not have a place to go to arrive to Switzerland. So everything has become very easy on the uh, side of the paperwork, identification and so on. You no longer uh, can only travel without visa when you have a biometric passport, which was the Schengen rule before. So all that has been lifted. And then the next one, that's the humanitarian aid. And uh, we are now um, uh, almost uh, three weeks since the start of this attack. And in this time, um, the Swiss humanitarian aid and the embassy of Switzerland, Poland, but also our representation in Romania, Moldavia, yeah. uh, with borders to um, uh, Ukraine, um, have facilitated humanitarian transports into Ukraine as long as still possible. Uh, we had um, first a special fight uh, two, three days after the start of the war. 
um, with uh, humanitarian goods, beds, tents and so on, which went into the border area. Then we came with medical goods, provision, hygiene goods. A whole train has been cleared just this weekend uh, to go, hopefully, still to Kiev. And um, more, uh, more shipments are uh, to arrive. However, um, we want to join the international community. And as soon as ICRC, World Food Program, UN and so on will be set up, uh, we will do what all of us should do take the wallet and donate because I think that this is really a moment in time where we can make a difference also with money, um, also uh, Swiss citizens who are not so close to the humanitarian uh, disaster like you are here, you see it in the streets of Warsaw, we feel from their it. home, we feel it. they yes. can donate to these institutions yeah. and the institutions will support uh, activists in their work and directly the refugees. So this is really a call for solidarity for everybody. And uh, thank you very much for this statement. And um, coming back to our topic uh, of Swiss political system, uh, how do you consider our book, uh, which is entitled uh, Do you know why you don't know who the president of Switzerland is? Uh, could you advise it or not to, to our young, young international audience? Um, <laughs> I unfortunately don't know the book in detail, but it has uh, been mentioned to me on many occasions, uh, also because it's a book which is uh, also um, issued in, um, in Polish. And frankly speaking, I find the, the title is, um, is, uh, is uh, uh, really very um, typical. Um, because when you um, uh, have a political system, in our political system, the presidency is rotating every year. And um, so we have a different president of the Swiss Confederation every year. The president is um, uh, still carrying on his with normal duties, so he's not, he or she is not a full-time president. And that really shows that the Swiss democratic system try to make the pyramid flat to give power to the bottom and not steep and give power to the top. And that's why the book uh, the, is, 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 is very interesting. And as I said, it has been um, issued in Polish. Yes, and also in English. So you can find it on the internet in the Google store. So we, uh, we advise to read this book as a very short and easy to read introduction to the Swiss political system. Uh, Your Excellencies, thank you very much. I am very grateful to you for this talk. Uh, I think that we will spread this message about Swiss political system, its main features, federalism, subsidiarity, paying for their own ideas with your own money, not some else's, uh, else people money. So thank you very much. And I hope we can meet in the nearest future and discuss another topics. Thank you very much. I'm very uh, pleased with your interest. I'm also honored with your interest. I'm honored with everybody who is interested and cares about Switzerland. And um, good luck. Thank you.